Hey friends, before we start, we have a quick message for your mom, dad, or other grown-ups listening with you. We're going to be talking about what witchcraft is and what the Bible says about it. If that's a conversation your kids are ready for, we're glad to be a part of it. If that's a conversation for another day, we have plenty of other content on Unite TV for you to enjoy today. A link to start a free account to watch all our videos is in the description. And with that, let's get started. Welcome to Good News Devos on Unite Radio. I'm Emily. And I'm Trey. To start today's episode, think of something that is very powerful. Think about it by yourself or talk about it with the people around you. What powerful thing did you think of, friends? I thought of powerlifting. It's a sport where people train to lift heavy weights for competitions. They can lift hundreds of pounds at a time. Can you flex your powerful muscles and pretend to lift heavy weights? <laughs> Great job. I thought of an elephant. Elephants have 100,000 muscles in their trunks and can lift almost 800 pounds. That's like 40 watermelons. Why would an elephant need 40 watermelons? Maybe they're hungry. Powerful animals need food to stay strong. That's true. Hey friends, do you know where all those powerful things get their power? Maybe the powerful thing you thought of needs to train and eat lots of food to stay healthy and strong. But even with all that food or training, that powerful thing you thought of got its power from someone. Ultimately, all power comes from God. But there's a belief and lifestyle that looks at the powerful, amazing world God made and gives all the credit for its beauty and abilities to the world instead of God. It even encourages its followers to ask the created thing to give them its power. That lifestyle is witchcraft. Witchcraft is the practice of trying to use magic or special powers to affect people's lives. Maybe you've seen pointy black hats, potions, cauldrons, and funny decorations to represent witchcraft. But most of those decorations are silly and usually don't take witchcraft very seriously. Real-life witches and warlocks aren't strange creatures with ugly noses, green skin, or cackling voices. They are real, normal-looking people who practice witchcraft. Witchcraft has existed for a long time, but not all witches and warlocks believe or practice the exact same thing. But they do have a lot in common. Witches rely on power from spells, nature, rituals, and a person's own strength. Witches believe it will give them the ability to connect with their inner power and connect with the earth. Witches might do this so they have happiness, blessings, revenge, protection, or answers to questions. Some even try to talk to dead people or tell people what will happen in the future. Witchcraft uses different tools in their rituals. Some witches might have an altar where they place crystals, candles, and herbs as an offering to witchcraft, themselves, or another false god. Some use different parts of nature and cast spells because they think that their own strength and mind need to connect with nature to give them what they're looking for. Recently, witchcraft has become more popular and accepted. Many people think it's fun or that it isn't bad because most modern day witches look nice and say they just want to help others. Just because it doesn't look scary doesn't mean it's okay. Witchcraft is evil and the Bible warns against it. For example, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, God warned the Israelites, There shall not be found among you anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. Even in the beginning of Bible times, there were people who practiced witchcraft. They did many evil things. Many tried to talk to the dead to try to gain power. God tells us that these practices are sinful and only hurt people. Since witchcraft doesn't come from God, where does it come from? Let's see what the Bible says. It tells us that there are two sources of spiritual power in the world. God and God's enemy, Satan. The Bible tells us that God is all-powerful. Psalm 147 verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Abundant means great. God has power greater than anyone in the whole universe. Not only is God all-powerful, but God perfectly understands everything. God's understanding of the world and how it works is unlike anyone else's because he made the whole world and everything in it. 
God commands us not to practice witchcraft, so we know that its power doesn't come from Him. If you are a child of God, you can always rely on Him for help because He is all-powerful. Witchcraft tries to take spiritual power to use it for yourself or for evil. When you ask for God's powerful help, like to heal someone you love who is sick or give you something you need, you are trusting God is the only one who needs to use His power and that He will help you and answer you. Then, when He does, all credit belongs to Him. Sadly, many people, like witches, don't believe in God and rely on another spiritual power. The power of witchcraft comes from God's enemy, Satan. He hates God and doesn't want people to know him and live with him forever. It's important to know that not all witches worship Satan. In fact, many of them don't know that that's where the power of witchcraft comes from. Many witches want to be peaceful and only use their witchcraft for what they think is good. But any power that comes from God's enemy is not being used for good, because Satan's goal is to keep people away from God. So, do you need to be scared of witchcraft? Not if you're a child of God. God's power is always the strongest, so you can trust God to protect you. If you see something like books or tools used for witchcraft, you don't need to be scared. Instead, remember that God alone is all-powerful. Can you say God is all-powerful with us on the count of three? One, two, three. God, God is all-powerful. All God is also with you to help you if someone invites you to do something that involves witchcraft. Maybe they'll ask if they can predict your future, do a ritual to connect with nature, or give you a message from a loved one who has died. Remember, you don't need to be afraid because God is with you. You can say something like this. No, thank you. I only trust God's power. Can you practice saying that with me? No, thank you. I only trust God's power. God will also be with you to show you how you can leave the situation. You might even get to use that as a way to tell them about Jesus. Remember, God wants people who practice witchcraft to stop doing it and know him, love him, and trust his power instead. If you know someone who practices witchcraft, the best thing you can do is pray for them. Pray they'll believe in Jesus as their savior and trust in his power. Can you say God is all powerful with us one more time? One, two, three. God, God is, is all powerful. powerful. Thanks for tuning in to Good News Devos on Unite Radio. Join us next time to explore another topic from God's Word. Bye. Bye.